just watch me for a second? Okay. We said that this was mostly remove the bottom, right? You can add something to the top after the fact. If you signal too much on the top, you won't be free in moving the, that bottom. He'll lock up. He knows something's happening. Now, let's say we're karate sparring, okay? And I'm going to go like this, right? And I can sweep him this way. I got in. I fake. He blocked. Did I use the top? Only to stabilize. Mostly I kicked out the bottom. Yes, sir? Do you use strikes to unbalance? You can use strikes, absolutely. Okay. No, Especially I... even if he blocks it. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe he wants to do it for this one. <laughs> no, he told me, okay. okay. <laughs> so let's say I'm going to do this. He's off balance. Yes. That's what we call the partial off balance in the previous summer. Now my question becomes to myself. My question to I'm in karate, what scores the point if I'm in swamp? If I'm in self-defense, what gets him out of the fight and doesn't take me with him? If I go like this, he's going to lift his leg out of reaction. I'm going to take it in the groin, right? But if I went, sorry, I should have gone this way. If I went like this and I moved my hips, I got it. And now I'm going to beat it out of there. Listen, you need jury. I don't mean to you have to go to court. I mean to say, you've got to lead this person. See? Punch me in this hand. Any jury there? No, I protect myself. Hit me on. Mm -mm, right? Punch me with that hand. Any jury there? Yeah. I not only blocked inside, look at, look at the off balance. I sucked him right into that position. The off balancing happened after the jury after the leading, okay? But I couldn't have done the off-balancing well if I had done this. That doesn't off-balance it, right? If I do this, nothing to it. I mean, look, I say nothing to it. I practice this to it. You have to have the timing has to be right. You know, later we'll work on, well, if we have time, we'll work on that type of thing with Ike where you're removing only the top, and it's all a timing throw. Let's say you do a yoke manucha. Change the Aiki now. This is what we normally do in Aiki. You see the inside of the hip. Cut. That's what you get. And then you lead them into a throw, right? But the more, he's a little off balance, right? Now the more I do this, the more he has to fall. So you can actually go, <clears throat> and no contact. If you're timing it right, Now, it's hard to tell what happened here, but you could tell, you could analyze and say, that's definitely removing the top, right? He threw himself, but it's definitely removing the top. Why did he throw himself? Why did you throw himself? I kept trying to balance myself, and every time I did, I got a little more off. Right? Because so I, I gave him no choice. I, it, it, either he has to depend upon me or he has to fall. There isn't any other choice. I didn't really throw him. He threw himself. But you can tell that it was removing the top. Now you have to ask the next question. What gets him to remove the top? When I say fold the person with a lock, I don't necessarily mean break the person's wrist because he falls because of, so he falls because of pain. If I fold the person, feel any pain? Not at all. Did you have to fall? Yes. Because I folded the person into the fall. So you can do it with pain, but it's not necessary. Thank you. I'm going to go and stay for a second. Let's say I do classical or similar to classical because guys should give a chair on skate, and I go like this. Did you feel any pain? No. Did you have to fall? Yes. Why? Because of soft balance. Your body folded from the top, right? Your top was removed. And the way I got his top to be removed is when he came around the corner, I took his wrist just gently and I watched his shoulder. And I folded his, his thumb downward so his shoulder fo followed. 
I did not grind on his wrist, which most people do. I don't have a problem with you grinding on somebody's wrist for self-defense, but I want you to understand that I can do this and drop that shoulder. So if any way I fold this wrist, so he f this folds next, and pulls the shoulder, which pulls the waist, I'm removing the top. Let's just do that. Let's do a cross grip. We'll do the, the hand that's gripped will come inside and fold like this. Looks like I'm giving him an elbow strike. The hand that's not gripped will take the wrist, or pref preferably take the ball of the thumb if you can. And all this will do, instead of slamming this on pain, all you're going to do is go like this, get out of the way, and point his elbow down. That's all. Any pain on the left? No. Okay? Watch it again. Get out of the way, point his elbow down. We're not trying to make it effective. We're just trying, or we're not trying to make it action. We're trying to make it effective. Now you know that if he resisted it, he could resist that. You know, in fact, resist it. And this way he's out of that. Mm -hmm. okay. I made him think he was going to feel pain, right? But you didn't. And now I'm going to make him feel pain, and he'll decide he'll be my partner. <laughs> Now we got him to remove the top this way by controlling the wrist, right? I could have also done it this way. Now I'm going to remove the top backward. Did you feel any pain in your wrist? Not at all. Now we, again, I do not want to say to you I'm, that I'm against your grinding on the wrist if it's self-defense. What I'm saying is learn the concept of what makes the throw work instead of learning the concept of pain. Everybody knows pain hurts. Try to do that on a guy's on PCP. He goes, Ooh. <laughs> OK? So watch. Watch again. See his wrist bend? No pain in that wrist, OK? Use weight dropping to go to his triangulation point, affecting off balancing and thus getting a throw that removed the top. We already moved away from potential pain. But I could also have done this. Did you feel any lock on your arm? No. Why did you fall? Not sure. <laughs> I know. The more, the more subtle it is, the, the, the less sure you are. Craig? Now don't fall for me. Okay? And when I ask you to be okay, I never want you to fall for me. I don't want you to resist, because you know, you, you've seen me do it five times, now you know what's going to happen. So now you go put on the brakes. I just don't want you to give me anything, because otherwise it looks phony. It looks phony anyway. <laughs> so no one believes it unless I say, don't fall for me. Good. Ah, no, that was good. I blew it. OK, now, why'd you fall? You had my hips, and I was afraid you were going to hurt my elbow. Ah. He felt pressure on his elbow. He felt his elbow hyperextend. He went, ah, oh, I better move. No, he didn't say, I better fall. He said, I better move away from this. He moves his upper body over his own foot, propping himself. Aren't you glad to learn to Propping himself by moving away from his 